Well, a big hello everybody and welcome to the next episode. I'm Stephen and this is Jana and today we're going to be creating a very special little video because we really want to say thank you to a couple of channels which have sent us some incredible items from America. Now that includes the channel Lisa from Treasures and Adventures and Nancy from One Day Pilgrim. That's right, those two incredible ladies have sent us some amazing items from the United States. Now Lisa sent us some beautiful rocks and crystals which she has mined in the area where she has lived and Nancy has sent us some amazing Petoskey stones from the Great Lakes and those items were incredible and for lots of you who watch our channel many of you may realise that we actually do a lot of field walking and um, we go in search of Neolithic and Mesolithic items. Now where we're standing now in these woodlands we're actually right on the very edge of a neolithic site and in these woods just behind us is a settlement which was inhabited for thousands of years and Jana and I have found some amazing items in these woods and there's earthworks in there um, we found axes and arrows and hammer stones grinding stones we found a, an amazing mortar stone and we really want to give back to Lisa and Nancy. So whatever we find today, we're going to send you guys. So we're just going to share it out between the both of you and we're going to stick something in the post as our way to say thank you. So these items were, ma were man-made. So dating from anything from 11,000 years ago down to 4,000 years ago. So Mesolithic, Mesolithic being the oldest and neolithic um the next era down from mesolithic so here we go and wish us luck everybody and hopefully we'll find something there's incredible badger holes in there and quite often they dig out stuff and there's along the edge of the um, settlement there's a really nice stream quite often things get washed into the stream and just in front of me here is a field and part of this field incorporates the settlement as well so we have done a little bit of field walking in in the field just just out there and again we found some incredible items there as well including a couple of arrows um lots of hammer stones too many so, yeah and we found some um heligoland red flint which is which was imported into the uk during the neolithic period from doggerland which is now underwater so wish us luck everybody and Lisa and Nancy, whatever we find. It's going to you. It's going to you. Thank you for sending us those items. Thank you so much. And this is our way of giving back. So you ready, Yana? Yeah. Let's go and see what we find. Ouch. So yeah, these woodlands we're walking through now are actually ancient woodlands and these woods established some time after the settlement was abandoned. So we're pretty sure this area was abandoned in the early Bronze Age because there's another settlement not too far away from us which was Iron Age. So this settlement was finished, abandoned by that point. There isn't really much left of the Iron Age settlement. It's actually below, exists now right below um, a big bypass. But they came across that settlement whilst they were digging that bypass. And I'm pretty sure we're going to find some nice autumn colours as well as we walk through here, aren't we, Anna? Yeah. We're going to head to the Badger Holes probably first and have a little look and see what we find there. And we've got this. Um, woodland pond here and it's actually again quite an ancient pond i think quite often on neolithic sites you do find neolithic pits and i guess they may have been these pits were possibly used as a source of drinking water or even bathing and um quite often they they threw offerings into these pits and underneath the mud, there's going to be incredible items, I'm sure. 
not that Yana and I are going to be jumping in there anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> that would be quite funny though. Yeah. And that's actually one of two pits. There's actually another one kind of in that direction. This, this area here is right at the very centre of this Neolithic site and I found some I have this is actually where we found the mortar stone we found a Mesolithic arrow here and oh, I'm trying to think what else we found um, oh there's some squirrels over there playing you might not be able to see them on the camera but yeah this is right at the very centre and just, and just behind us is where all the badger holes are now these badger holes can stretch for miles underground and there's Yana over there playing on her bouncy tree. She plays on that every time you come into these woods. <laughs> My favourite. I know it's your favourite. <gasps> yeah, there's loads of squirrels around today, isn't there? <laughs> okay, so this is actually where one of the badger holes are. And Yana and I have actually... It's bigger. Yeah, oh, actually, it has been... Yeah, you're right. That's recently been dug out because that hole wasn't there before yeah it was no not that one i'm sure it wasn't yeah it was, that yeah, was there. It, perhaps it was just a bit smaller but this is all yeah. fresh all fresh mud here isn't it yeah they must have dug out again so this is worth having a little look through just having a quick look and see if we find anything here okay i've got something here actually that's um that's a looks to me like a neolithic knife you can still see the cortex just just on there and you can actually feel the bulb of percussion just just here and if you look sometimes if you look i might have to give it a wash when we get home but, oh you can actually see the um the ripples of where the um this particular item was struck from the actual rock yeah that's nice Little tiny Neolithic blade there, everybody. So that's got to be at least six thousand years old. I and found quite a lot of stuff. you found a lot of stuff. I'll have a look in a minute, darling. So yeah, that's a good start, anyway. No, nothing yet, nothing over here. Huh? Nothing over there. But it's not as fresh as this. Okay, I just found this. It's actually shaped like a tranchet. They were often used in both the Mesolithic and Neolithic period. This one in particular looks like a rough out. So something that they were working on but haven't finished. But you can see where they're striking pieces off the edge here still got the cortex on this side this side is a bit thick so this is possibly an item that they abandoned whilst in the making process but still a nice little item That's cool. even if it's in, even if the item isn't complete. And of course, the nice thing about this woodland is it's undisturbed by ploughs. There's never been a plough through here. So everything you find is still in its natural form, the way it was left thousands of years ago. Yeah, it's quite a nice little item. It's not too bad to find. Oh! It's quite nice. Is that a knife? I think it is a little knife, yeah. A little tiny Neolithic one. That is so cool. <sighs> Find uh, another bit. Actually, it might even be Mesolithic, actually, because this looks like it's been struck from a core in that shape. How thin that is. See? Wow, what? that's... That end bit. Wow, look how thin it is. It's tiny. I know. I say a little child would hold, hold it that. So there we go. We've got ourselves a little Mesolithic blade. Oh and you can God. feel the serration. Can you? Very, very slightly along the edge there. Where? Here. Yeah. Can you feel that? Yeah. 
Yeah, Launching. nice light in there. It might be hard to see on the camera, but here you've got this corner. So this is actually the corner of the inner ditch and it goes off in that direction. Giving us this centre area where possibly the main settlement was. And just over here we've actually got one of those other Neolithic pits I was telling you about. So we'll take a quick walk up there now and I can show you that. And there we go, here's our second Neolithic pit. During the winter months this is often full of water as well. Again, there's going to be stuff underneath there for sure. Mm. And just, yeah, I'm just going to head over to the stream and then just over here we've got the edge of the settlement and it's now become a natural stream. Oh, would have yeah. been, probably would have been filled with water to be honest with you before. And I have found a few items along this stream because where we get rains, items get washed into here sometimes. So it's always worth a little look along here as well. Oh, fall. Yeah, I'm trying not to fall. Me too. And then on this side, we're on the other side. We're outside the um, that Neolithic settlement boundary. Okay, Jana and I are going to head to the field now. We're going to have a quick search of the field and see what we find there. Oh, that's nice. Look. Look at the serration on that. Look at that. Can you see that? I don't really feel it. Yeah. My pattern's lovely. Again, here you can see where this has been struck from a core. And you can see this lovely serration just it's on the edge. Yeah, so how the core is like the, the pink. Yeah, it's the actual yeah. pink. So nice tiny little blade there very nice and here we've got another one of those tranchet rough outs here would have been used probably as a spear or an axe so that's the second one we've actually found on this site we find again Dana and I do find quite a few of these particular ones very similar to this another nice find there I actually didn't think we'll find anything in this particular field today because it needs plowing but I'm pleased with that so yeah that's I'm pretty sure that's possibly Mesolithic Yeah, pleased with that. What is it? It's a trencher axe. Is it? Yeah. <gasps> Ooh, look what I found on. Okay, Yana's just picked this up from the ground. Again, you can see where that's been struck from the core. We've got ourselves a little knife there. Another nice little find. Again, we'll have a proper look at these when we get home. Don't step there. Okay. Oh, look at that. What? <laughs> it's picked up a little tiny hook blade. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool, isn't it? Oh, that's sharp. It is sharp, yeah. Nice find, everybody. Nice little Neolithic hook blade there. Okay, everybody, we did have quite a bit of success actually I didn't think we would because this particular field hasn't been ploughed yet but um, but yeah no I was really pleased with that tranchet axe that Yana and I found just a short time ago and we found a couple of other little items on this field too so we're gonna give those all a wash up when we get home and show everybody our finds and then we're going to go and get those posted and sent off to Nancy and Lisa in America. Our way of saying thank you to you guys because you are stars. Thank you so much. Oh, 
Okay, let's get let's head home. Let's get these items washed up. Let's get the kettle on. Make a cup of coffee. Let me have some of the cake I made. Oh, I'm just gonna have a bit of cake because she made one earlier. Well, yesterday. Actually. Today? Yeah, you made one yesterday. It came out a bit flat though. Yeah, she made a chocolate cake and it came out flat. <laughs> but she didn't put the she didn't put she, she was doing it all on her own and she forgot to put the cake on the top oven and she put it in the centre. So it didn't Oof. rise properly it rose, but just it wasn't cooked really properly in the middle, so we had to put it back in the oven for another 10 minutes and then it kind of Oof. went down a little bit. <laughs> but never mind, it still tasted nice. Okay everybody, so this is the items that Yana and I have found on our little search of the uh, ne Neolithic site in the forest and, and out on the field as well. So um, we've separated them into a couple of poles. So one of these is going to be sent to Lisa and one's going to be sent to Nancy. So we've got two rough out tranchet axes here. Well, one rough out tranchet axe and one rough out tranchet spear, I think. So that's the um, rough out tranchet axe there. That would date from the Mesolithic period. So you're looking at 11,000 years old of that. And same with the spear as well. So both of those items, this is actually a lot more complete than, than the actual spear. But yeah, it would have gone into an actual um, a deer antler. And they would have used it like that. And pretty much the same for the spear as well. That would have gone into there. But they certainly didn't finish that. And that was found in the forest and that was found out in the field. And we've got this little tiny knife here. That's lovely, that is. Still got the cortex on that. That's Neolithic in period. Little tiny blade. I'm pretty sure what we're looking at here is Mesolithic. And another tiny little, another tiny little Mesolithic blade just there. Looks to me like in the shape of a laurel leaf, so and if it's a laurel leaf, that's, and you can you can see the serration around the edge there. So, if it's a laurel leaf, and then it's um, actually Neolithic in origin. Got a tiny little knife here. Lots of little blades. We've done well with the blades. Mm. And we've got a little tiny hooked blade just here. And over on this side, we have this really nice knife here. You can These actually... are my favourite. Yeah, we'll have a look at those in a second, yeah? So here, I'm in the light. I don't know if you can see those ripples there. But that was... You have to strike the flint really hard to create those ripples. That there... It doesn't happen naturally. And that's always a wonderful indication of something that was man-made and it's polished as well so we've got ourselves a nice polished neolithic knife and it's a, and that's polished as well you can actually feel that on that side that's polished that's polished that's been polished and here we've got a nice Mesolithic knife here. Again, another polished item. A little tiny Mesolithic or Neolithic knife. Sometimes it is very difficult to separate the, that Mesolithic period and Neolithic. So, um, if we, I'd say a lot of these items are, if we say six to eight thousand years old, that would incorporate part of the Neolithic and Mesolithic period as well. So that's what we're looking at on these items and this tiny, lovely, little tiny Neolithic blade just here. And again, another polished item. And Yana and I wanted to send something else as well, something very special. And we found these, these earlier this year in that location. And we've got two leaf-shaped arrowheads dating from the Neolithic period. And we're going to be sending you both one each and they're very very tiny so this is one of the neolithic arrows and so we'll be sending one each to 
lease on one to Nancy and so you're looking at four to five thousand years old for this particular tiny British Neolithic arrowhead leaf shaped and in particular with British Neolithic and British Mesolithic these arrowheads are a lot rarer than what you would find say with Native American arrowheads which which are very common and you don't see British Neolithic arrowheads going up for auction very often compared to like I said Native American ones because the Native Americans were making flint arrows right up until the 1500s but Britain abandoned stone tools in the Bronze Age period so three to four thousand years ago Britain started making their tools in metal which means which makes them a lot, a lot rarer these two that yeah. one and the other one are my favourite yeah they are very lovely aren't they mm. and here's the other tiny little leaf shaped arrowhead just here tiny little things and like I said very rare and if you want to see anything like this then you'll probably have to head to the British Museum or one of the local museums which might have a few examples I okay. just tested this on my hand and it's really sharp yeah some of them are sharp because they're serrated aren't they mm. okay everybody a big thank you for joining Yana and I we hope you enjoyed the episode um, this video really was for Nancy and Lisa so Again, thank you for sending us those wonderful items and we hope you enjoy what we're going to send you guys. So until next time, we'll see you all soon. Bye. So bye for now. Bye. 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 <laughs> but the truth is, if I'm honest, I feel stuck here. Change is gonna find